generate an induction ceremony. We would like to start the program off by introducing a 1967 graduate of Cardinal Ohio High School, former football player, and our Pennsylvania State Representative, Mr. Bill Adolph, is here tonight to give Cardinal Ohio a citation on the occasion of his 50th anniversary. Thanks, John. It's certainly a pleasure and an honor to be here tonight to see so many great friends. First of all, I'd be remiss to say congratulations to those that are going to enter the Cardinal Harris Hall of Fame. For many of us, when we walk these halls, we still get goosebumps. Some get it for other reasons. I get it because I normally had to clean the halls that you're now walking on. But it's really a pleasure to be here to celebrate Cardinal Harris' 50th anniversary. I was one of those 13-year-old boys who walked into this institution in 1963. Myself and my good friend from St. Kevin's, Austin Quinn, is no longer with us. He's probably one of the best athletes I've ever hung around with. Hopefully someday, will recognize him here in the Cardinal Higher Hall of Fame. We walked into this place and we never saw a school so big. Coming from St. Kevin's, where we had a total of 12 boys in our 8th grade class, 24 girls, not, not bad odds. <laughs> but we walked in here and it was really the foundation that made so many of us. We had a gigantic class. We had a little under 1,200 boys and girls. They say there was girls here, but they never let us see them back in those days. But it was really an honor. We had a, a fairly large sophomore class. Guys that got thrown out of honor at St. James. They were allowed to come here. And we didn't have any varsity sports. We didn't even have a mascot. Guys like John McFadden, Jerry Greiser, Coach Mike. Those are the guys that made up the athletic teams here at Cardinal Harris. We used to play our basketball games at Don Winella, who was no gymnasium here. Finally, I guess when the first class, the class of 1966 became juniors, I guess we started getting varsity sports. We got a bus kick pretty much by everybody. Until we had four years worth of students here. I think we got at one time at 4,400 students in Cardinal Power. My senior privilege was a young priest back in those days. He was charged with a responsible for the library just a couple of years ago when I went up to St. Anastasia and said, I don't ever remember you being in the library at all. That's a true story. I would be remiss if I didn't say how proud I am to have lost John McFadden by basketball. He probably absolutely died when he found out that I made the Cardinal Harris Hall of Fame before he did. <laughs> I led the Catholic League in first base with Prendy Girl in all four years. But it's really an unbelievable honor to stand in this place and look at this beautiful gym. And I know how far this administration has worked over the years with struggling enrollments. And I'm so glad to see so many of the alumni back and taking an active role. Because when we went here, we did not have an alumni. I know the boys' side always wanted to be called the O'Hara Raiders. And then there was an official vote and somehow another became the O'Hara Lions. We wanted to be black and silver because the 
Raiders were so good back in those days. But what a great institution. So many great alumni. I've had the privilege to sit here and watch some of our outstanding alumni and see what achievements they've made over their careers. Absolutely outstanding. Doctors, lawyers, the History Channel founder. I mean, just, just to name a few, it's outstanding. And tonight's group, another outstanding group. And arguably, according to Jerry Feary, the best high school football team ever in Delaware County, the best team. A couple of legendary coaches, fantastic, fantastic. I'm so proud that I have known them. They did such a great job. Jewish Strass cut me my freshman year three times. <laughs> but it's so nice to be back here at Cardinal House. And I have a citation, like the citation that you like to receive. And the amazing thing about this is that there's 203 members of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. We have three Cardinal Harrow graduates in that chamber. Representative Tom Kelly, Representative Joe Hacker. Myself had the privilege of introducing this citation. I'm not going to read it to you. There's a lot of warehouses, a lot of the accomplishments, the band playing in front of the Pope, playing in front of the President, the outstanding athletic team, the outstanding art and theater performances. And for the dedicated faculty that spent all those years helping us students achieve, not only to get graduate, but to develop a toughness, a moral foundation, so we can contribute to society. So it's certainly my pleasure to present to Dr. McCusker a citation from the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Thank you, Mr. Adolph. As we sit in this beautiful gym, many of you have had the opportunity to sit out there in that beautiful athletic complex that we have out back. So this school amazingly has probably the best facilities uh, in the Catholic League, if not the county. And that stadium project was a lot of hard work by the current administration and alumni to raise a lot of money to build that athletic complex out back. And, along, and of course this gym. And Bill Adolf was very instrumental in, in, in receiving for our hearts a substantial state grant to build that stadium. So I want to thank Bill again tonight for that. Speaking of beautiful facilities, how about this gym, huh? Is this place great? We uh, up until just a few short weeks ago, we didn't think we were going to be able to have this affair in here until we uh, were able to buy this uh, beautiful wall wall carpeting to cover uh, Steve Moran and Linus McGinty's court. So um, I want to thank uh, Mike Daly, who made a substantial contribution to this floor. So, just a reminder that the desserts are out. I want to thank the Finley brothers of Cardinal, great Cardinal Harrow graduates, Steve and Tom Finley, for their great job tonight, and the food was delicious and so much uh, The pizzas up there are homemade, so make sure you get them. Actually, they were made in my home by my beautiful wife, Marty, so thank you, dear. So don't forget to get those pizzas. Um, before we get on to the uh, inductions, 
just amazing to see the people here tonight. And I want to thank everyone for being here. Just, you know, the football guys, the basketball guys, it's, it's wonderful to have you all here. Um, the coaches, if we could just, if they, all the, everyone who has either coached previously or is coaching now at Cardinal Hacker, please stand up and take, and take a bow. All the coaches, we have a lot of coaches here tonight.
75, just two years after I graduated from O'Hara, spiritual writer Alexa Paul at the Arsenal lost her husband, a two-year-old baby, baby daughter in a car crash. Several years later, she wrote a powerful poem entitled, Yes. The beginning of it reads, our circumstances are different, our hurts, hopes, and brokenness are different, many of our fears are different, but our healing journeys, I realize, all begin the same way, with one word, yes. In planning this short acceptance speech, I asked myself if there's one high school memory other than sports that may have had something to do with the yes that I said to my wife 35 years ago and to the challenges we have faced raising seven kids. Is there a high school memory that's connected with my decision to say yes to a career change at age 46 in the business world of social work? The yes has given me the privilege to be present to hundreds of homeless and local men every day for almost six years at St. John's. Is there a high school memory that somehow recognizes that the path in and through brokenness, anxiety, depression, and fear is actually the only transformative path? The path modeled by Jesus and now modeled for us by Pope Francis. And then it hit me. I remember the high school story that only me, my therapist, my spiritual director, and now you will know. I was a junior in religion class. It was an all-male class at several ways. A missionary was invited to lead that particular class. I remember a slideshow of pointing pictures of African men, women, and children, many of them suffering, being supported by these missionaries. At the end of the class, he handed out index cards. He asked all of us to put our names on the top. He then asked if these images had moved something deep within us, if we had felt compassion bubbling up deep inside us, and felt some kind of connection to this ministry, just put down one word. And that one word was yes. I guess you know by now I'm not going to make bold yes on the top of that index card. The missionary called me and visited my house the next week. I was surprised by the call and the visit. I was also surprised to hear that I was the only young man in that entire class to write down that, that yes. With God's grace, that one painful yet transformative word yes continues to move me through the muck and losses into the growth and beauty back again. The flowing process we call life, and spiritually we call the pastoral mystery. Paula D'Arcy, that woman who lost her baby and husband, goes on to say her poem, yes is a mystery like loaves and fishes, water into wine. Out of yes come new beginnings. Yes changes the broken heart. Yes opens the eyes to beauty. Yes moves the suffering, causing it to pass through. Yes, I will accept the circumstances of my life. I will cry and cry and mourn my losses, will hold them near until all their wisdom has been spilled, will accept them until God takes what man meant for evil and creates a bit of brilliant good. The very pain that wounded me is my deepest reservoir of truth. It is my well of living water. Isn't it amazing and affirming that we can, through grace, gaze at our struggles and vulnerabilities and recognize both wisdom and God's loving presence? Our well of living water. Hopefully, a yes response to that amazement is beating in your hearts right now. My three thank yous to Cardinal O'Hara for this honor, for the spiritual formation that helped open us space for that yes within me, to the Pope who continues to energize me and hopefully all of us to look at life, faith, and relationships with new eyes. Eyes that see the welcoming and inclusive spirit of Christ from everywhere. To my family, Wait at this table right here. My beautiful wife, Beth, Catania Mark, that's the 74. Our seven children, all here. My dad, over there. My ten siblings, ten, sib ten siblings, and countless other relatives and friends who have been a beautiful part of the fabric of my life. Thank you. Gerald J. Farrow, unfortunately, could not be with us tonight uh, due to a last minute scheduling change. And uh, we will hold uh, Gerald to be uh, inducted next year. Uh, it actually works out because Kevin talked long enough for three people. <laughs> Gloria Hoffman.
is also a 1973 graduate of Cardinal O'Hara High School. She has earned a bachelor's degree from Temple University with a major in journalism and a minor in music. Gloria also has earned graduate credits in astrophysics from Westchester University. In the years since her graduation from O'Hara, Gloria has been awarded Temple University Sigma Delta Chi Award for an Outstanding Journalism Graduate, the Girl Scouts USA Community Award, and the Boy Scouts of America Service Award, the Sterling Healthcare and Rehabilitation Humanitarian Award, and the National Mature Media Award of Merit. Her Carmel education strengthened her faith through religious education devices and more so from the living faith of the faculty of Western religious. At O'Hara, she experienced a strong community that supported education, personal conduct standards, and service to others. Being a member of the O'Hara band and experiencing all the functions related to playing in the band gave her a lifelong love of music that led to her present career. Now, 29 years later, she became a member of a community band. In Bobbin and the band, has brought a new career that resulted in starting her own business. She is the owner and author of Guitar with Gloria and Science for Seniors. Gloria firmly believes that any quality high school can give students a strong academic foundation to face the world, but Cardinal Harrop also provides the knowledge to walk forward in faith. For her service to residents of retirement and long-term care facilities in the tri-state area, as author and entertainer, her provided, providing certification places for retirement home activity directors and her living her faith through her parish and larger community. We proudly welcome Gloria Hoffman into the Cardinal Harrow High School Hall. Thank you. 
school, we have uniforms, tight middle space reports, and everything else she could do. To my husband, forgive him, he's a carol boy. My wonderful brother-in-law, Tony, who's admitted me for this. My sister, Helen, who's a professor at Holy Family University and the author of five textbooks. Dr. Hoffman played clarinet in the band. My sister, Nancy, who's the CFO of Ellen Inc. She played flag in the band. And at the moment, we have two more graduates. My nephew, Ryan, is now at Drexel, and Nicole will be the ninth member of our family when she graduates from Ohio this June. Thank you all very, very much. Kevin, I take a comment back about you being too long. <laughs> you were fine. Christian Lee is a 1999 graduate of Cardinal Higher High School. She is a graduate of Illinois University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Communications. In 2006, she earned a Master's degree from Dressel University in the Science of Instruction. In addition, she has obtained a Bachelor's degree in Nursing from Villanova and is currently pursuing a Master's degree in Nursing from Villanova. While at Ohio, Trish was a standout basketball player, selected as second team all Catholic in her sophomore year and first team all Catholic in her junior year. She was a member of three Catholic League Championship girls basketball teams. In 1999, Trish was selected Catholic League Southern Division Most Valuable Player and also the Delaware County Daily Times Player of the Year. Trish was also selected as All State Player during her senior year here at Ohio. Trish was selected as an AAU All-American Honorable Mention in her senior year and USA Today Honorable Mention All-American in 1998-99. Trish continued her stellar basketball career at Villanova, where she is one of the most decorated players in the program's history. Currently, Trish is a registered nurse in the neonatal intensive care unit at the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. For her outstanding contribution to her chosen sport as a championship team player at Cardinal O'Hara High School and her continued success in that sport at Villanova University, we are proud to welcome Trish Julie to the Cardinal O'Hara one of the most fun things that has ever happened to me, but it did not start out so great because 
the, the year that I came here was when they started open enrollment. And so it was just me and a couple other people from my grade school. So I didn't know anyone when I first got here. So I had a like, pretty tough time, like, pretty tough time transitioning. <laughs> and I also couldn't get the grid of the school down. So instead of like going to my locker in between, I just carried all my books with me all the time, every day, all day. So it wasn't a really graceful time for me. But once basketball started, I kind of got into a flow. And Mr. McGinney and Chris always had created this culture of acceptance and fun. And once I made friends with the girls on the team, I developed this confidence to just be myself all the time. And it really allowed me to form friendships and relationships outside of the team in the school to really get the full experience. And I just, I thank him so much for that. Mr. McGinney to this day is the cutest human I think I might have ever met. And I also, I also, it's, it's like funny the things that you remember. And he used to always sing identical cousins in, in class, which I don't even know if it's a real song, but Virginia <laughs> Hannah and Candace over were cousins on the team, who he would always sing it to them, and I sing it all the time now. I've never heard the actual song. And it's just it's just such a nice uh, a nice thing to have all these wonderful memories and like I said, to be honored in this way is truly a thrill. So thank you very much. And congrats to everyone. Francis Buddy Martin is a 1968 graduate of Cardinal Arrow High School. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in English and Theater from the Sales University, and he also completed a Master's degree in Theater from Villanova University. Currently, Buddy serves as the Executive Director of the Delaware Theater Company. Buddy is considered one of the best directors in the field. He is also a Broadway producer and has mounted a show on the West End of London. During his time as a student at O'Hara, Buddy believes he found God and the people he met on a daily basis. He stated that many of the priests and teachers he had at O'Hara were the most important influences in his life. Buddy has many fond members of O'Hara, not the least significant of which is his traveling homeroom. Most of his attention centered on being in the various productions put on by the O'Hara Theater Department. One group that Buddy still periodically participates in is the reunions of Blue Haze, the famous and versatile singing group from the early years of the school. Blue Haze held a reunion as part of the 50th anniversary of the school celebration in November of 2013. Buddy along with Larry McKenna were an important part of that very successful reunion. For his proficiency in his second career of show direction and production, his efforts to provide opportunities to young playwrights and actors in the theater, and his generous support of the arts. Cardinal Howard High School is proud to welcome Francis Buddy Martin into the Cardinal Howard High School. Um, as I said in the little bio, um, 
my traveling homeroom um, was one of the highlights of my time here. And we still actually get together. And a few years ago, we all decided that one of the most influential teachers we had was Father Carbine. And we looked him up and we all showed up at his rectory and made him have dinner with us. And, um, and John, I had the opportunity to spend some time with John. My baptized name is Francis, and he's a Jesuit, and we have a great connection, and so he's unfortunately not healthy enough to be with us tonight, but I want to give a big shout out to John, so thank you all very much. John McFadden is a 1967 graduate of Carlisle High School. John earned a full scholarship at Rutgers University and graduated a bachelor's degree in English. Following graduation, he was an assistant basketball coach for eight years at Rutgers. Currently, John is Senior Vice President and Investment Officer for Wells Fargo Advisors. John recalls that his O'Hara education laid the groundwork for the liberal arts education that he received at Rutgers. His fondest memories of O'Hara are the lifelong friends which he made during his high school years. While the litany of friends included mostly male classmates, John does admit that he did have some females among his friends. I can't believe you put that in here. <laughs> These friends, made O'Hara a special place. In recent years, John has been a big supporter of this gym renovation project that we are sitting in here tonight. At O'Hara, he was taught to read for comprehension, to write clearly, to think logically, and to listen critically. Little did he know how valuable four years of Latin would prove to be in his life. He loved playing basketball in front of standing room only crowds, especially against our driver, Monsignor Bonner. On the downside, he wasn't crazy about hitchhiking from St. Anastasia's in the middle of the winter, only to be told by Coach Jim Purcell that he was late and he had to run extra sprints. He was named an All-Catholic and led the 1967 team to O'Hara's first ever appearance in the Philadelphia Catholic League playoffs. John was a boys' AA basketball coach for a number of years and now is a highly respected head coach for the region's Thomas AA team. For his contribution to the sport of basketball, his desire to assist young people in both the joy and the fundamentals of the game, and his desire to live his life with the foundation he learned at O'Hara, we are proud to welcome John McFadden into the Cardinal O'Hara High School of All of Fame. He's down there with some um, really good friends, Tommy Inglesby and Mike Daly, uh, two fellows who I don't think I'd be standing here tonight if it wasn't for their support. Uh, Joe Hazinski, who was a great player here, and Mike Harrison, uh, Bobby Knapp. There's just so many people, it's really overwhelming to come back. I mean, dozens and dozens of people. And, you know, you forget a lot of things over the years. I don't have a lot of individual memories, you know, day-to-day -day stuff, but the, the one thing about going to school here is the people. The, the people have been an incredible influence on my life. Guys that I met as a freshman in 1963 are still friends. We still go out to dinner, we still play golf together, we still care about each other. And I think that's the big thing. You can be educated anywhere, you can play basketball, at a lot of places, but I, I don't think there's too many Cardinal O'Hara's around. The, the bond that people have has always been special. I think there's 30,000 of us that have 
going through here. You can't go anywhere without running into an O'Hara grad. And invariably, they're really, really nice people. They're humble. When you go to a school that had 550 boys in your graduating class, you're not going to be the best looking or the best athlete or the smartest. Uh, we weren't given anything. There was no prima donnas, nobody treated uh, specially. If anything, I think the athletes were probably under the microscope a little bit more. And the guys that I went uh, through school with uh, have been incredibly successful in business, and yet they're the same guys that I knew back in high school. They uh, are just uh, products of a great institution. We were well-educated, we were well-disciplined, we were very well-coached, and it's just, uh, just an incredible uh, pleasure to say that I'm an you know, honor to say that I'm a guy. When I coached the Rutgers, I was uh, fortunate enough to coach in the Final Four in 76, and what made it special was that we played in Philadelphia, obviously where I was born and raised, um, and up until tonight, I think that's the greatest thrill that I've ever had. But I think I have to move that to second place now because this honor is, uh, is really special and something I'll never forget. And I just want to thank everyone. Thank you, John. And having, having John up here uh, makes me want to digress a little to a quick commercial. Um, as I mentioned, John was very supportive of all with most of the guys, or all the guys that he mentioned. And a lot of other uh, men and women who are sitting in this room, you know who you are, who are very supportive. But not only that beautiful stadium out back, but this wonderful gym. And uh, we wouldn't be in this beautiful gym without the support of guys like John McFadden, Tom McGusby, Mike Daly, and the rest of them that you mentioned. Um, as I said, it's a commercial. You might have seen the sign for the new elevator out back. We're not done. We're still raising money for that elevator. Um, we'd like to install a platform lift to get people up into the gym for events and games here at the gym. So, um, I'm flat out asking for money for the elevator. <laughs> so, um, one of the goal, one of our next goals too with this is to redo the locker rooms. The locker rooms are still this same old locker rooms that uh, you guys all played in, we all played in. So that's the next phase of the locker room. But we would like to sneak that elevator in sooner than later. You know, this being the 50th anniversary of the school, you know, we are so proud to have the facilities some other schools only wish they could have on their 50th anniversary it's due to the great generosity and support of alumni and friends of O'Hara like we have here tonight. So if you've never been able to have the opportunity to donate, uh, to make a gift to the annual appeal, there's no better year than the 50th year to make that donation. So thank you for that. And that's the end of the commercial. Uh, as John mentioned, Father John Rock is very, very ill and could not be with us tonight. Um, but we, and his family also, uh, because he is so sick, could not be with us there with him. So I would just like to read his induction um, since, uh, since we have it here. Father John Rock, SJ, is a 68 graduate of Cardinal Hara High School. He attended Strath University and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Modern Language in 1972. Father continued his education earning a Master's degree in German from Middlebury College. In 1980, he was awarded a Doctor of Philosophy degree from Pennsylvania State University with a concentration in German. He graduated from Fordham University with a Master of Arts in Philosophy in 1982. Rounding out his education, Father earned a bachelor's degree in sacred theology and a master of divinity degree from Regis College in 1984. After studying at the University of Innsbruck, he obtained a licentiate of sacred theology. He has served pastoral assignments in Hong Kong, Ontario, Canada, Toronto, Canada, Medi, Italy, the Diocese of Willing, 
Charleston, Warsaw, Poland, Assistant Professor of Theology at Wheeling Jesuit University, University Chaplain at Gonzaga University, Spokane, Washington, and Pastoral Ministry of the Jesuit Community in Baltimore, Maryland. Father also served as an official in the doctrinal section of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith. He collaborated with Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, who was Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, in the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. For his faithful loyalty to the work of the Society of Jesus, his commitment to religious life as a Jesuit, his continuing pursuit of academic excellence, and his dedication to the Universal Church, we are proud to welcome Father John Rock into the Cardinal Harris School. Okay, I have a trivia question. Name the two people in this room who both won a Catholic League championship in football for Cardinal Howard High School. Players. Trivia question. I know you know Julie. The only father-son combination who are here with us tonight that won a Catholic League championship, Frank Lemus and Mike Lemus. The transition of our Harrow football began with the hiring of Coach Chappie Moore, who was coming off his second playoff appearance as the official captain. <laughs> Chappie's first major decision was to reach into the CYO ranks and assemble a staff comprised mainly of coaches from various parishes. This provided comfort and familiarity to the returning players and established strong bonds throughout the CYO coaching establishment, ensuring that premier players who were recruited by local prep schools throughout the region thought instead of O'Hara as their first choice for high school. From the first meeting, Chappie generated a positive approach to the players coupled with an infectious enthusiasm. The change was accepted positively by the players who took on the challenge of a rigorous off-season conditioning program. The players soon learned that there would be an entirely new approach to football. Practices would be long and demanding, concentrating on teaching proper techniques and learning a new offense and defense. No detail was overlooked. New game uniforms and helmets were introduced. When the team took the field for its first league game with St. James, they strode confidently onto the field to take on an opponent that had previously enjoyed much success against O'Hara. There wasn't the usual pre-game hyper emotional display. Coach Moore emphasized that they stay under control, not get caught up in the highs and the lows of the game, but keep an, keep an even approach to their emotions. The faculty and student body reacted tremendously to the team's success and attendance at the games increased dramatically. The culmination of this was a motorcade in Villanova for the Archbishop Carroll Championship game. The team invigorated the entire school as well as the Delaware County community, which had previously ignored O'Hara football. The 1973 championship team raised the bar for O'Hara football and paved the way for the success the subsequent teams enjoyed. The excitement and enthusiasm of that season was a catalyst for what became a dominant football program. Just a couple stats about that team. There were 12 All-Catholics, 11 All-Delgos, 11 All-Cities, 7 All-Areas, 3 All-States, the MVP of the Southern Division, and the Maxwell Club Award winner. Just amazing.
If I could just call out the players that are here tonight um, and the coaches and ask the players to stand at your table and, uh, and we'll ask Coach Jeffy Moore to come up at the end. Anthony Baffa, Dennis Bucky Bikai, Bob Carroll, Mike Shinetti, Sean Collins, representing Frank Conroy, his widow Jeannie Conroy, and her son Frank Conroy. Mark Cortez, Joey Fugan, all the way from Florida. Mark Hennessy, Hugh Jeffers, Mike Kirkman, Steve Ledva, the quarterback John Leota, Frank Lewis, Pat McElroy, Mike Narciss, Rocco Nicolino, Joe O'Shea, Dave Benici, Bob Sal, Greg Tansy, representing Brian Tracy, his widow Jean Tracy, and their son Brian Tracy. Mark America. Did I miss any players? Coach Russ Hendricks. Coach Gary Representing Coach Jimpa and his wife, Mickey Jimpa Abbott, and his daughter, Marissa. <laughs> coach Nick Smith. And head coach, Jackie Moore. <laughs> for the team that made it a dream to play for the front on our lines, for the team that set up a new group record that will never be broken, for the team that made it together as brothers and would not let each other down, we are proud to welcome, for the first time ever, the 1973 championship football team into the Cardinal Hour High School. George and, and, and uh, uh, 
Coach Curry is no longer with us. And uh, it's a tribute to guys like Brian Tracy that aren't any longer with us. Um, but I went back to my high school, and um, my wife will tell you, my lovely wife for 43, 44 years. Um, I have trouble with dates. Um, a lot of trouble with dates. I got married on Valentine's Day. It's easy to remember. Her birthday is December the 8th, the night of conception. <laughs> and um, the son was born on the 4th of July. <laughs> so, um, that's the way I keep things straight. Um, but, um, so all the way back, there's tears running down my eyes. Um, the saying, geez, I gotta go back, I gotta go back. And uh, I went back for you. And uh, that's a tribute to the, these young men here. And I've been back for 14 years and uh, love as much as ever. But I'll see you guys. You guys were the guys that made it happen. Uh, we pushed some buttons and unfortunately at times we pushed the right buttons and, and we had the right coach and staff come in. Uh, we hired guys. And, and see, the reason I hired all the guys from the CYL was nobody here. The building would work for me. Uh, they were all pissed off. Uh, and, uh, so I had no other choice. Sorry. I didn't, um, and, uh, but again, magic. We had great, great times and, and ended up at Franklin Field. Uh, you know, in closing, uh, I picked up Sports Illustrated. If you had to pick up the new Sports Illustrated uh, reading, uh, the principal here at the time is Father Morton. Uh, and in the article in Sports Illustrated uh, this week, it talks about uh, the Super Bowl being played in Giant Chess Stadium uh, at the old. I forget, 1962 uh, was equivalent to the East West Championship in professional football was played at Yankee Stadium. Uh, and of course, it was the great uh, immortal Vince Lombardi, and, uh, and it talked about uh, the game. And, and, and it, the band that that game, that played at that game at halftime, was part of the Packers band. And the, uh, the moderator of that band was Father Morton, who was here. And he quoted the Vince Lombardi a little bit. Eric, uh, Father Mortimer to Vince Lombardi, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I know Father Mortimer. Uh, and uh, when it said that uh, Cardinal Dr. Van was going to go out and by uh, Father Mortimer, and, and uh, uh, he told him, you know, are you piccolos on freezing or whatever they're playing in the country? And uh, he, um, uh, but he talked, he said, hey, just go out and know what you practice to do. And they turned around and quoted Vince Lombardi, and he basically said that, that same message. Um, for the Packers and say, just go out and coach and do what, 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 you, uh, what you're taught to do. And uh, so, O'Hara is in, in Sports Illustrated, uh, former principal. Uh, all we did at Cardinal O'Hara in 1973 is, hey, well, do what you're coached to do. And we certainly, certainly did that. And, and congratulations, uh, you guys are the best. Thank you. The rest of the inductees tonight, the president of Cardinal O'Hara High School, Dr. William McCusker. Good evening, everybody. This is uh, truly an honor to induct these next two fine gentlemen. Uh, I've done both of them for quite a number of years. Our first uh, IRR inductee is Coach Bud Gardner. Bud Gardner is a graduate of Monsignor Bonner High School. He's also a graduate of St. Joseph's University. The impact of graduating from these two schools had an effect on his entire life. Because of these experiences, he became a Catholic school teacher and has enjoyed each of his 44 years in the classroom. Coach Gardner coached in the Philadelphia Catholic League for almost 40 years. His record of 560 wins is the third all-time high in the city. While at O'Hara, he posted 463 wins and 270 victories during the Catholic League. He holds a remarkable position as an area coach by coaching 21 first team all city players. Coach, coach also mentored, mentored 17 first team all Catholics, and while having coached 56 all Catholics overall, he successfully led his teams to 
10 league playoffs, and during that time, his team produced two 1,000 point scores. Coach Carter was selected Coach of the Year in 1989. For his dedication and loyalty to students and athletes at Bishop Kennedy High School and Cardinal O'Hara High School, his faithfulness to his profession as a Catholic school teacher in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, and his quiet manner as a teacher and coach, we are proud to conduct Bud Gardner at the Cardinal O'Hara High School.
I'd like to thank my wife, Holly. Always there, always supportive. I remember at some of the football games when she'd be sitting in the stands and people would be talking nastily about the head coach. And Holly would just simply get up out of the seat, walk to the end zone, and stand there and watch the game. And if she had one of the two, or both of the boys, whether they would do that too. Thank you. Thank you for all your support and letting me accomplish things. Thank you very much, Jim. And all the young men and women that I taught, that I coached, that I, that I directed, thank you for all your support. You'll always be part of my life and my memory because I enjoy what I did very, very much. Thank you. Coach, we've had a special request which I have uh, decided to honor, so I turn the microphone over to one of the players. I'm not as tall as anybody who's been up on this stage. Uh, could everybody who's ever played for Coach or Coach with Coach Jasper say? I was fortunate enough to have a uh, and anybody who has spent time in the locker room with Coach remembers this prayer, so I was actually asked to come and say it. Pray not to win, God willing, we will. Ask instead to give 100% of your ability. Pray that no one on the team is seriously injured. Thank God that he gave you the ability to play the game of football, because we thank God that we can coach him. Take your time, though! Good luck. God bless you. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. James McCaffrey was a 1966 graduate of Cardinal Air High School. He was the oldest child of James and Dorothy McCaffrey. Born and raised in Southwest Philadelphia, he attended Blessed Sacrament School, and when his family moved to work, he attended our Lady Perpetual Health. Jimmy was a member of the first graduating class of O'Hara. After spending his freshman year in St. James, he transferred to O'Hara, where he supported all athletic teams. Upon graduation, he began to work for Bell of Pennsylvania, following in the footsteps of his father and his uncle. During the Vietnam War, Jimmy was drafted into the United States Army in May of 1968. Despite the growing opposition to the war, Jimmy did not shy away from his obligations. He was assigned to the 25th Infantry Division, 25th Replacement Company, and landed in Vinh South Vietnam, where he was killed on October 27, 1968. He had served only four days in Vietnam. For his unselfish service to our country, and making the ultimate sacrifice in service to our country, we gratefully welcome James J. McCarrick for posthumously into the Cardinal O'Hara High School Hall of Fame. Except for the family, this is his brother, Jack McCaffrey.
Charles McGrath is a member of the first graduating class of Cardinal Hare High School. Charlie attended Holy Cross Grade School. He attended Monsignor Bonner High School for one year. At Bonner, he was a member of the varsity swim team as a diver. In September 1963, Charlie transferred to Cardinal Hare High School. He was elected by his classmates to serve on student council for, for the three years while he was a student at O'Hara. In addition to being the lead in several theater productions directed by Father Desio, he was selected captain of the swim team three years in a row. During the summers of 1963 to 1966, he was a diver for the Los Angeles swim team where he won four consecutive gold medals for competition diving. He was the winner of gold medals at the Catholic Nationals in 1965 and 1966. In his senior year, he was selected Cardinal Harris, Cardinal Harris first all Catholic diver. Charlie entered the U.S. Marine Corps and graduated in most outstanding Marines from Paris Island in June of 1967. He was sent to Vietnam in August of 1967. Charlie was wounded twice during combat missions in the fall of 1968. He was killed in action near Quay City during the Tet Offensive in February of 1968, while saving the lives of several members of his company who were trapped during an ambush. He was the recipient of the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart and the Marine Corps Medal of Valor for his unselfish service to our country and for making the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country. We gratefully welcome posthumously Charles McGrath into the Cardinal Howe High School Hall of Fame, accepting for his family as his brother Sandy McGrath, who is also a member of the Cardinal Howe High School faculty.
because of the weather, uh, there are no representatives from the Miller family here. Okay, I, didn't, I didn't think they got here, but I, I think, it, of course, it's necessary to read uh, John's uh, biography. John Miller was a 1967 graduate of Cardinal Harrow High School. He was the oldest son of John and Catherine Miller. In 1952, his family moved to Glen Oval and became members of Our Lady of Fatima Parish. John attended his freshman year at O'Hara when school first opened. The family moved to Woodland in 1966, and John needed special permission to attend O'Hara since he had moved out of O'Hara territory. After graduation, John attended Delaware County Community College, where he earned an associate's degree. Interested in flying, he began to take flying lessons. After college, he worked for Transworld Airlines as a baggage handler so he could continue his flying lessons. He tried to join the Air Force but needed a four-year college degree. So he joined the Army and was accepted into helicopter play school. John earned the rank of Warren Officer and Pilot. Having tried out for the Army Rangers, he decided to stay in the regular Army. He stayed in the regular Army to fly, not kill people. In August of 1972, he was shipped out to Vietnam as a member of the 117th Assault Helicopter Company. He immediately saw action and he and his crew rescued a large number of American troops trapped behind enemy lines. For his action, John was awarded the Army Air Medal. Three weeks later, their base camp was under heavy fire while flying as a light ship to locate the source of the water fire. The modified Huey helicopter encountered heavy fog and crashed. John died the next day after his family's death. They found, after his death, his family found solace and the fact that John was following his dream and passion for his unselfish service to our country and for making the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country, we gratefully welcome posthumously John Miller to the Cardinal Tower High School. Uh, a special welcome and thank you for being here, Monsignor Philip Cribben. Uh, 
Uh, my senior, uh, my second principal here when I was on the faculty, the first time in Asian Alley, went on to become a pastor, the secretary of Catholic education, and a pastor again, and he's enjoying retirement. But my senior, it's great to have you. On your table is a gray sheet. If you'd like to nominate somebody to be considered for the Hall of Fame, please fill this out, either give it to myself or uh, to Jim Warnold. Uh, John did a little commercial with the 50th anniversary of the school. We are beginning a 50th anniversary capital campaign. It's really a very modest campaign to just play that. But there are some things that we need to get done, and you will certainly be hearing from us about it. Uh, there is also on your table a list of upcoming events. The school fashion show. Let's go back in time. The communion breakfast, Bishop Michael Berge, will be not only the celebrant of the mass, but the speaker at the communion breakfast. Bishop, as you know, is the Bishop of Raleigh, North Carolina. And the Lions main event, which is uh, April the 26th. So they're all that to look forward to. And uh, I would ask each of the current members of the Hall of Fame to stand right now and to be recognized. Current members of the Hall of Fame. Son and the Holy Spirit, and have a great evening.